Mm-hmm. Yeah, good afternoon all. So myself, I'm Vijay. Like I hear, I hold 20 plus years of experience, which includes nearly 10 plus years of experience in big data and how to pen environment. So as part of today's demo, I'll be covering the following topics. What is big data? Why Hadoop? Drawbacks with the current databases. Drawbacks with the current databases. Hadoop advantages. Hadoop, scope and job market. Both Hadoop and uh, Spark, both I'll be discussing. Hadoop, scope and job market. Okay, starting with what is big data? What is we starting with what is big data, right? Yes. The name itself saying huge volumes of data. <clears throat> huge volumes of data. Currently, how the data is getting stored, data storage units, right? Like KBs of data, MBs of data, GBs of data, terabytes, petabytes, exabytes zettabytes, so terabytes, so on, right? Should have seen KBs, MBs, or even GBs, or even TBs of data. But petabytes of data, is it getting generated in the current real world? It means yes. A lot of applications are generating petabytes of data. One petabyte equal to 1,024 TBs. Already one TB is a large storage unit, right? Now, examples of petabytes of data generation, right? Uh, examples of petabytes of data generation. Exam any examples of uh, application generating petabytes? Take yes. any bank. Yeah. yeah, some examples here, right? Hmm. Facebook. Facebook, right? Yeah. Gmail. Yeah. So if you talk about a banking sector like SBI or HDFC, or if we take an ICICI bank, right? So if you talk about, uh, they have got different branches now. Within the, within the city, right? You see hundreds of branches for that. Which in, within a particular state, you see like a, thousands of branches for that. And within the entire country, you can see lakhs of branches for it. Again, each branch, millions of customers, each customer making multiple transactions per hour, per day, per month, per week, right? Each and every transaction. So it has to be stored, right? Huge data is getting generated. As you said, okay, forget about this. So take the example of social media like Facebook. It has got users throughout the world, right? It has got users throughout, throughout the world. In a minute, how many posts and videos are getting circulated? Each and everything has to be stored. What should be the storage capacity to store all those, right? What is the data generated by Facebook in a minute? <clears throat> Not in MBs or GBs or in TBs, petabytes of data. <clears throat> Not only Facebook, today if you talk about any application, Talk about the Twitter tweets, sir. Or if we talk about this uh, Google queries, today everyone is here. They're querying in the Google, right? And uh, YouTube videos upload. YouTube videos upload. Yes. Everyone are uploading the videos. What should be the storage capacity to store all the videos? <clears throat> And uh, email messages, email or Gmail messages. Millions and trillions of people using this email messaging. Each and every message has to be stored. What should be the storage capacity for storing all the millions and trillions of 
just now I was talking about the bank transactions. <clears throat> Bank transactions or telecom transactions. Talk about the bank transactions, telecom transactions, or even if you talk about the e commerce transactions, e commerce transactions like Flipkart or Amazon, right? Every, everywhere, right? Huge data is getting generated, right? If you talk about uh, Talk about this uh, Google, Google, right? Google, on an average, it is generating more than more than six hundred petabytes per month, on an average, <clears throat> more than six hundred petabytes per month, on an average, right? Not only this, all the applications are generating huge data in petabytes, petabytes, right? So we need to have some proper storage systems. We need to have some soft processing systems for storing and processing this huge data, right? Currently, we have got a databases. Currently, we have got databases. If I talk about databases, they are used for online transactional processing. So currently, we have got a databases, I'm saying, right? <clears throat> Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, all this, they're used for OLTP, Online Transactional Processing. But we have got some specialized databases. We have got some specialized databases that are used for data warehouse purposes, right? Specialized databases used for data warehouse, like if you heard about uh, Teradata, Netija, Vertica. Yes, these are used for <coughs> data warehouse purposes, DWH. Excuse me. These are used for OLAP. <coughs> Analytical processing databases like Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, all these they are used for OLTP, Online Transactional Processing. But specialized databases like Teradata, Netija, Vertica, they are used for OLAP analytical processing. Either these databases or specialized databases, they can handle data up to some extent. They can handle data up to some extent. But uh, unlimited data storage is not possible. Unlimited data storage is not possible, right? Yes. Okay. So as a solution to all these storage level problems and processing level problems, we have got a framework called Hadoop. So what are the services of Hadoop? What it is going to provide before I go? Uh, you need to understand about this uh, data generation. How this data is generated from the last 50 years. This is your data. Assume this is your data which has been generated from the last 50 years. Hmm. This is the data which is available in the current real world, which has been generated from the last 50 years. Assume from 1974, 2000. 24 right yes observe this last 10 years compared with that previous ones right 2014 to 2024 this last 10 years compared with the previous 40 years right so just 80 percent of the data you will see which has been generated from the last 10 to 15 years and previously, only 20% of the data in the last part, previous 40 years. <clears throat> Reasons for huge data generation. Reasons for huge data generation from the last 10 years. Sir, because of usage of technology. Usage of smartphones. Usage of internet. But everyone, they are using internet, right? 
previously 1990s, if you think 1990s, secondary storage systems, floppy disks, 1.44 MB. People used to carry this floppy disk. Later, you got compact CDs, DVDs. Later, you got this USBs. So data storages are increasing day by day, right? So what are the main sources from where this data is getting generated? What are the main sources from where this data is getting generated? Mainly three sources of data. Mainly three sources of data. Social data. Machine data and transactional data. Data, three sources from where this data is getting generated. Social data means data which has got generated from social media like Facebook, Twitter, all this. Machine data means Data which has been generated by reading or scanning the barcodes, RFID chips, for the items you purchase, a huge bill is getting generated right in the shopping malls. So data which has been generated from these machines. Transactional data from day-to-day -day operations like bank transactions, telecom transactions, right? And mainly this data is going to take three formats, three types, three types of data. First one, structured data, semi-structured data, unstructured data. Semi-structured data like Excel files, DB tables, Semi-structured like XML files, JSON files, JavaScript object notation, key value notation. Unstructured data like chart messages, articles, images, videos. Today, most of the data, most of the data like uh, is being generated in the form of unstructured format. The biggest challenge is handling this unstructured data. But the databases can handle only structured data. But to handle this unstructured or semi-structured kind of data, all varieties of data can be handled by Hadoop. So coming to this Hadoop services. Hadoop is mainly meant for two things. Hadoop is mainly meant for two things. For storage and secondly for processing. Hadoop is meant for storage and processing and for storing. For storing, right? Yes, for storage. Does Hadoop use any databases for storing its data? Means no. Databases has got some drawbacks despite of the drawbacks. Still, Hadoop doesn't go with databases for storing its data. Rather, it is going with a special kind of file system called as Hadoop distributed file system. We call it as HDFS, Hadoop distributed file system. Yes, even for processing, it is going with an execution model called as MapReduce. Now, currently, going with spark so for storing and processing we talk about any technology like c or c plus plus or java.net all these they are meant for processing or if you talk about storages like oracle mysql sql server all these they are meant for storage they are meant either for storage or processing any technology is either meant for storing or for processing. But Hadoop is meant for both. Hadoop is meant for 
both storing and processing storage and processing it performs both for storage hdfs and for processing map reduce okay why databases why databases can't be used for storing Hadoop's data? What are the drawbacks we see with the databases? Drawbacks with the current databases drawbacks with the current databases now check this uh, first thing is limited storage in the databases limited storage in gbs or in tbs only secondly no parallel processing in both most of these databases no parallel processing in most of these databases thirdly if volume increases if volume of the data increases speed decreases what yes If volume increases, speed decreases. Okay, for example, for example, observe this SQL query. Select total amount from select a total amount from sales one table. Sales one having 10 records. Has got 10 records. Select a total amount. Select a total amount from From sales, so it has got one lakh records. Select total amount from one selector. Total amount from sales three, which has got one crore records. Total amount from sales one, 10 records. So total amount from sales two, 1 lakh. So total amount from sales three, 1 crore records. So here, try to respond. Which query is going to execute faster among these three? Total amount from sales one or sales two or sales three. Which query executes faster? The first query, right? Because uh, total amount of 10 records as compared with 1 lakh or 1 crore. First query is quick. So here, query to query as the volume increasing, speed decreasing. Right? Next, fourth. If complexity increases, If complexity increases, what? Speed decreases. Example. Observe this. Same query I'm taking. Think you got one lakh records. Total amount from now this time not total amount, uh, average amount I want. 
same sales pan only. No total amount from sales, so not total amount. I want a standard deviation of amount. Which query is going to execute faster among these three? The first query only, right? Because second second query is a two step process. First sum has to be calculated. Next average has to be calculated. As compared to the first query, second query is going to take more time. Again, as compared to the second, third query is going to take more time. Means lot of internal processing required for the standard deviation. So query to query as this complexity increasing, speed decreasing, right? Yes. The major drawback with the databases, no. Major drawback with the databases. It can handle only, it can handle only structured data. It cannot handle unstructured or semi-structured data. Just check this. For example, if you want to take reviews for a particular movie, you want to take reviews for a particular movie, right? Yes. user review user 1 user 2 user 3 100 user 1, user 2, user 3, 100 users giving the feedback. User 1 saying the movie is good. Is saying second person saying movie is bad. If movie is good saying 1, if the movie is bad saying 0. A feedback in the taken in the form of 1s and zeros. Can you write an SQL query for this to count the number of 1s and number of zeros? Can you write an SQL query I'm asking? So it is in a structured format, rows and columns. Can we write an SQL query? Yes. Single grouping, single aggregation. Selector. Review wise account I want from the reviews table. Group by review. A review wise count I want from reviews. Group by review. So one and zero. Group by review means one and zeros, right? I want to see that ninety people saying the movie is good. 10 people saying the movie is bad. Means review wise count you got. Means for this kind of structured data, okay. But generally reviews won't be given in the form of ones and zeros. First person saying movie is good. Second person saying movie is not good. In this way, they are giving in their own text to format. Now can you write an SQL query to say how many people saying it's good, how many people saying it is not good. We cannot write, right? It cannot handle this kind of data. Even by using keyword count, if you are trying, uh, even uh, it gives wrong computation because even 
not good has got good in it, right? So these are the drawbacks with the current databases. Less storage, no parallel processing in most. If volume increases, speed decreases. If complexity increases, speed decreases. A major drawback with the databases is it can handle only structured data. Now, advantages of Hadoop. Hadoop advantages. First thing. Unlimited data storage. Unlimited data storage. Unlimited data storage. Very high speed processing. Very high speed processing you are going to see. Can handle all varieties of data. Can handle all varieties of data. Structured, semi-structured and unstructured, right? Yeah. Can handle all varieties of data. And uh, commodity hardware. Means commodity hardware means like very highly configured systems not required. It can run on any hardware. Open source. No licensing is required. So cost cutting, right? So major advantages is unlimited data storage, very high speed processing, handling all varieties of data. Yes. Hadoop is proven in the market storage point of view and processing point of view. There were many tests conducted. Yeah. Yahoo has conducted a test to check the speed of a different databases. So it has taken a table. It has taken a table of 100 TB consisting of 1024 columns. Task. Sorting based on 16 columns. Time taken by different databases. First time, Oracle has taken nearly 3.5 days to process it. it. Has taken nearly 3.5 days. MySQL has taken nearly 6 days. Teradata, which is used for data warehouse, right? It has just taken three, four point five hours. Netija, another specialized database. Used for data warehouse purpose, it has just taken three hours. Finally, Hadoop. Finally, Hadoop. Hadoop has just taken 4.2 minutes. So the others have taken like days of time, hours of time, has taken just minutes of time. But, okay. So this is what the speed of Hadoop as compared with other things, right? The others have taken... Uh, days of time hours of time it has taken just minutes of time right okay this is sorting based on 16 columns like 100 tbs of data that's 1024 columns this is that speed compared by hadoop and other databases
just okay this is regarding harup just i'll also said as part of the course we also be discussing about uh, spark pi spark right so <clears throat> What is Apache Spark? Wi-Fi Spark? Need for Pi Spark? Real life usage of Pi Spark features real life usage, right? Yes. Yeah, so I can say Spark is an open source cluster computing framework introduced by Apache Software Foundation. All right, it is an open source distributed cluster computing framework introduced by Apache Software Foundation. It is a general engine. Spark is a general engine, right? For big data analysis, processing, and computation. So PySpark, it is a Python API to use Spark, right? Python has got many packages in that one package it is giving as PySpark. The so Python API to use Spark. Um, so I said PySpark is the one of the lightning fast technology that is designed for fast computation. It's one of the demanding tool among data engineers to work with bigger data sets. So using PySpark, we perform we can run distributed SQL, creating data pipelines, ingesting data to the databases, running machine learning kinds of algorithms, and uh, streaming and graph algorithms, right, and many more. Need for PySpark means you see huge amount of data getting generated through offline and online, right? So these data contains huge hidden patterns, unknown corrections, market trends, customer preference, and other useful information, right? We need to extract some valuable data from this data. So we require some efficient tools to work with the huge data, right? So PySpark is one such kind. It is a flexible tool for cracking big data and gaining benefit from it, yes. So combination of Python and Spark will be the very efficient for the world of big data. That's why Apache Spark community came up with a tool called PySpark. Okay. Need for PySpark. Okay, need for PySpark I discussed, right? Where this uh, PySpark real life usage, right? It's uh, mostly used in the real-time processing, Apache Spark real-time processing, right? In bank and other financial systems, the Spark is used to retrieve the social media profile and to gain benefit from this. And, uh, and also in fraud detections and also in healthcare, right? Predicting the patient's condition based on the previous history. Entertainment industry, right? everything is going towards the online streaming right so the popular ott platform right netflix also using this apache spark for real time processing personalized okay fine even in the e-commerce like uh, flipkart amazon all these they are used for uh, they're using for advertising even for tourism industry right to advise millions of customers, right? Comparing hundreds of webs. Okay. So in brief, I'll be discussing right about this Spark, but it has got great demand in today's market, right? Spark with very high speed. So already you said Hadoop speed, right? Yes, Hadoop speed is this, but Spark is as got away. So Hadoop and Spark combinedly they are going to store and process. Okay, so as part of this course, I'll be discussing this once compare this course. Big data, what is big data? What is big data? Need for Hadoop, 
comparison with other technologies uh, or DBMS Hadoop Advantage of Hadoop HDFS Hadoop distributed file system or other features of HDFS HDFS architecture name node data node secondary name node job tracker task tracker map reduce processing demands phases of map reduce input split partitions in map reduce and also now coming to this uh, scoop sql plus hadoop first two characters of sql last three characters of hadoop comes forms a scoop so we use scoop for importing and exporting operations and while importing we can perform different transformations before the task come to the target right yarn yet another resource negotiator yarn components yarn architecture everything i'll be discussing no sql database one no sql database also i'm discussing that hbase hbase is the no sql database and one of the important component of hadoop hive here we have got a language called hql which is similar to sql hive query language internal okay working with xml data working with json data working with url and web block data right yes Have UDF, UDAF, UDDF, user defined functions, user defined aggregated functions, user defined tabular functions. Multi column partitioning, see partitioning, static partitioning, multi column partitioning, dynamic partitioning, and also like performance tuning mechanism, as I said, this partitioning techniques, bucketing techniques, indexing techniques, and the combination of partitioning, bucketing, combination of partitioning and indexing, and partitioning, and this combination of all the three partitioning, bucketing, and indexing Okay, next. Okay, apart from this, I'm also going to provide you the knowledge of streaming technology, right? Like the uh, Flume Kafka, in that Kafka, I'm going to be, give that, provide you the knowledge on this Kafka, Kafka streaming. And apart from that, the PySpark, my major discussion is on this PySpark. What is PySpark? Need for PySpark, repartitioning, PySpark, RTD computations, RTD persistence and uh, pass it. memory only, disk only, disk underscore SCR, PySpark core computing, groupings and aggregations, process of group by key, reduce by key, and various actions and transformations, count by key, count by value, sort by key, different transformations, inbuilt functions, PySpark SQL data frame, using function without, with multiple expressions, with single expressions, creating a data frame, Show structure type, row class, column class, select color with column with column rename, where and filter, drop and drop duplicates, group by join, union and union all, union by name, the so flat, for each, fill none. Right in this way, different functionalities with many working examples. By Spark SQL functions like aggregate functions, window functions, data and timestamp, JSON functions, read and write JSON file. And just by spark built in functions when expr let us split translate overlay to to date months, months between that explode array contains what yes by spark external sources right spark and hive integration spark and mysql integration working with csv json transformations and actions on data frames narrow and wide transformation Adding of new columns, dropping of columns, renaming columns, 
handling nulls, joins, window function, writing back to external sources, deployment modes, local mode, cluster mode, right? Facebook application, right? Stays and task, drivers and executors, narrow and wide transformations, building Spark applications, pipelines, deploying Spark, that is Spark application to cluster and tuning, performance tuning by Spark streaming concepts, integration with Kafka and by Spark ML lib. This is what I'll be discussing. Apart from that, people who doesn't have knowledge on Python, total Python core and advanced will be discussed as part of this. Right. In the case of Python, why Python features, versions, installation, flavors, Python operations, operators in Python, different IDs, flow control statements, looping statements, strings in Python, collections in Python, Python lists, tuples, sets, dictionary, functions in Python, Modules in Python, modular programming, packages in Python, errors and exceptions, file handling, orbit wanted programming concepts, regular expressions, database connectivity, Python daytime module, OS module, advanced concepts like iterator, generator, closest decorators, Excel workbook, data analytics, introduction to data science, Python pandas model in brief, numpy model in brief, and matplotlib model in brief. Okay, so that one second. So here we have got a big data package, right? Yes. So first Hadoop is going to be discussed. PySpark is going to be discussed. But only this Hadoop and PySpark. As part of this, right? How to pen by Spark? The fees, the fee structure is twelve thousand for this. And apart from this, there is a package I said where how to for by Spark total execution everything like that. By Spark and Linux. Python. Python core and advanced will be learning here core plus advanced. So it is uh, rain tomorrow. The class will be at uh, 3 p.m. But uh, the actual timings of this batch. Okay, evening it will be from 7 p.m. to 9, 7 to 9, 7 to 9, the mm -hmm. coming session. Tomorrow it will be at same 3 p.m. to see more discussion on this. But it's totally so this python you can attend any of my python batch from monday to friday so tomorrow there is an 8 a.m batch morning it's going to start at morning 8 a.m there's a I mean sorry monday monday at 8 a.m there is a batch and also some evening batch like 9 p.m is going to start in the coming days so any of my Python batch will be Monday to Friday. And this three this will be in the weekends. Sir. 12 nearly 12 weekends, so three months. 12 weekends we are going to I'm going to discuss. So the course fee is 15,000 for this. If anyone, if you have already got enrolled for Python, that Python piece will be deducted from this, and the remaining you need to pay for this how to price park and Linux. Okay, fine. So clear. You will be getting the each and every live recorded video, so live recorded session video. Okay, live each and every session video, soft copy of the class notes. Assignments and tasks to work with. Is the software I'm going to provide how to work in different environments and the software will be forwarded to your Google Drive and a WhatsApp group will be created for technical discussion. 
if you got any error, you can take the snap of it and post in the group and previously asked interview questions. Any queries you have got, everyone? So tomorrow also, if people can attend the session 3 p.m. same time to see more discussion on this. Any queries you have got? So the regular batch timing will be 7 to come. So yes, sir. So at the last, by using this Hadoop and Spark, I'm going to discuss one project to flow. How many years of experience you can fit after the course means? A typical three plus four plus years of experience person, how much knowledge is going to gain? That much of knowledge I'm going to provide. That's why it, I said it's a nearly three months it is going to take. We are going to spend three months. So here, this uh, initially people who are attending uh, Hadoop, Hadoop in the weekends will be going. Python will be going in the weekdays. Once this Hadoop is completed, this Python core gets completed. By the time you started PySpark, you'll be in the Python advanced so the python core knowledge so the prerequisite for this is uh, sql basics python basics and linux basics linux basic i'll be discussing python i'll be dis discussing sql basic as required right everything everything whatever i discussed you will be understanding 100 percent right any other things Yes, any other queries, right? Okay. So if I'm done with your queries, if there are no other queries, we'll meet tomorrow, same time at 3 p.m. to see more discussion on this. Fine. Fine. Okay. Thank you all for your time. Thank you. Meet you tomorrow. Yes. Bye.